Oh, shoot, I probably shouldn't be whistling in one of these. Well, I guess it's all right. I'm not on board ship right now. Hi, I'm Carl Herzog, public historian for the USS Constitution Museum. You know, whistling on board a ship is one of those many uh, things that we associate as being a superstition among sailors that it's bad luck to whistle on board a ship. The public image of sailors is that they had a lot of superstitions and that was one of them. Uh, and in some cases, those are sort of made up, overwrought, uh, but in other cases, they still hang on today. Whistling on board is one that is definitely something you'll still hear if you're on sailing ships today. I personally have sailed a lot with one particular cook who is uh, incredibly superstitious about people whistling on board. Absolutely hates to hear the sound of it. She's a pretty rational person in general, and I don't think she really believes that whistling uh, is necessarily going to bring bad luck on its own. The idea behind why it's bad luck to whistle on board ship is that you're whistling up the winds uh, and that you don't want to bring those heavy storms down upon the ship you're sailing on. In the Cook's case, it's certainly uh, better to have smoother seas because few people on board a sailing ship uh, suffer on a day-to-day -day basis from the effects of a rolling seaway than the people working in the galley when hot pots are sloshing all around. But the adherence to that superstition also comes from just a long time of being surrounded by people who believed likewise that whistling was just not something that should happen on board ship. So in some ways, that particular superstition is associated with a kind of reality. You definitely didn't want the specific um, results that were going to come from whistling up a bad wind. But it also stays ingrained in the community culture by virtue of the fact that you just hear it for a long time and it becomes an accepted uh, way that you want to react. Whistling on board ship, I suppose, could also be considered kind of bad luck, uh, not bad luck, but potentially interfering with the rest of the communications that are trying to happen on board a ship. And maybe that's another reason you wouldn't want to whistle on board if your own whistling was going to override the, uh, the sound of a bosun's whistle, for example, or something else, uh, some other sound on board ship that you needed to really hear. That's just one example of the kinds of superstitions that we associate with sailors. But, you know, American pop culture kind of draws its inspiration for the legends and uh, the culture of the sea from two really diverse sources in particular. And when we talk about sailor superstitions and the symbols that they adhere to, a lot of it in pop culture at least tends to be drawn out of one of two very distinct areas. The first is the pirates of the 1600s, particularly in the Caribbean. Now, you would think that this is, of course, something we can all lay at the doorstep of Walt Disney's Pirates of the Caribbean, but in fact, uh, the pirates there have been romanticized since the earliest accounts of their day do down in the Caribbean uh, at the very time that it was still occurring at the end of the 1600s and beginning of the 1700s and the public remained fascinated by it uh, ever since. Uh, the second um, source of a lot of imagery and symbols that the general public uh, associates with sailing ship sailors in particular are the merchant sailors from the beginnings and mid uh, 1800s. This was a time period when American merchant ships were sailing increasingly far around the world and American merchant seamen were showing up in ports of call everywhere and it's also a time when sailing ships were on their decline. Uh, by the post-Civil War years and the end of the 1800s, steam iron steamships were beginning to eclipse the sailing ships, and the romance of that era was something the public was glomming onto. So when we say things like sailors in the good old days, we have a tendency to sort of flatten out this entire 300-year time period uh, and think of it as one kind of homogenous group of sailors. In fact, nothing could be further from the truth. But having said that, there are recurring symbols and superstitions that tend to show up uh, throughout history on board ships and among a variety of different kinds of sailors. And I thought today we could talk a little bit about a couple of those and where they're from. In the meantime, if you want to test your knowledge of which superstitions and elements 
might be associated with good luck versus bad luck on board a ship, be sure to check out our Sailor's Life Live video taking a look at exactly that. You can find that on, uh, on, our U on the USS Constitution Museum's YouTube channel. Some of the superstitions uh, discussed in that video that we associate with sailors can seem ridiculously specific. For example, one of them is that it is considered bad luck to have bananas on board a ship. Now, where would that possibly come from and why would you associate bananas with bad luck? Well, it's not so much that bananas are creating bad luck, half so much as it is that in the pre-refrigeration days and at the time that uh, American Merchant Mariners were first encountering bananas in the tropics, bananas don't transport very well and as we all know they don't last very long before they go bad quickly. So rotting bananas on board ship was not only kind of gross but had also the potential to make you pretty sick if you ended up eating them when they were turned to black mush. <laughs> So that, I suppose, is one of those cases where superstition arises out of something that is, in fact, a practical reality. It's not so much that bananas are bad luck on board ship, half so much as it is that they could just be really gross if you kept them on board too much for too long. By the way, the bananas that sailors were encountering at that time period didn't look very much like the modern grocery store banana, which has been bred into something completely different. Uh, and bananas have their own history uh, of life on board that have really shaped the maritime world. The banana boats that began delivering bananas to the United States early on were painted white for the very reason that they reflected the sun, keeping the cargo holds cooler so that uh, the bananas wouldn't rot as quickly. When people started wanting to travel down to these tropical ports, particularly in the Caribbean, they went on banana boats that were painted white, and eventually, as those tourist uh, cruises on the banana boats turned into entertainment cruises altogether, the cruise ship industry maintained that white hull paint job that it still has today. So, even something as simple as a banana has a pretty long and rich history. In addition to superstitions associated with a huge variety of actions, activities, and things uh, that may incite good luck or bad luck, um, there's a wide variety of other symbols and imagery that tend to be associated with sailors and the maritime world. Some of these symbols are considered to be uh, good luck uh, and lucky symbols. Um, and others are just symbols that are in some ways hopeful or in some ways representative of uh, bad luck and the difficulties that sailors could have during a life at sea. Here's a particularly classic example of one of those symbols, the fouled anchor. Uh, in this case, incorporated as part of the symbol for the Navy chiefs in the United States Navy. The chiefs like to say that the uh, fouled anchor represents the trials and tribulations that they go through becoming a chief, but that's a fairly modern interpretation. In fact, the imagery of the fouled anchor goes back to the 1500s and is associated with uh, incredible difficulties at sea. A stocked anchor similar to this in real life uh, could become fouled or tangled up in its anchor chain or anchor road as it's called. And if it did so, it would be particularly difficult not only for the anchor to hold and do its job, but also for it to be hauled back up. That could be a pretty precarious situation if you were definitely relying on that anchor. Oddly, something like this, this symbol of something that you would consider to be um, a negative situation, turns into, over the centuries, this uh, far more stout and optimistic view of perseverance in the face of those difficulties. You'll see the fouled anchor image in myriad uh, maritime and nautical art, including a lot of tattoos. Uh, and its meaning has shifted, uh, obviously, over time, uh, and it means something that's a little bit different to everyone who incorporates it in some image or another. But anchors, whether fouled with a chain or not, um, continue to also be representative of, of sailors and their trials at sea. 
Here's another great example of that symbolism and meaning that includes the anchor, and in this case also one of the ship's guns. This is a powder horn that belonged to John Lord, who was a gunner on USS Constitution during the War of 1812. Uh, Lord sort of created his own uh, symbol and insignia by crossing one of the ship's guns with an anchor, and he used this symbol on pretty much everything he owned, and the USS Constitution Museum has a couple different examples of it, uh, but the powder horn uh, and his sea bag, uh, his personally marked sea bag that he carried all his stuff in. Yeah, crossing things uh, and symbols like this together has a long history itself, um, tying into the idea of crossed swords and weaponry, which would be crossed when they were uh, clashing together with each other. Uh, guns uh, like these cannons crossed over to each other uh, was adapted from that as well, too. The U.S. Army actually began using uh, the same kind of symbol of cross cannons officially, for its insignia in the 1850s. Uh, but here, Lord was uh, merging the imagery of the anchor and, and the gun. One only wonders whether or not John also had this tattooed on himself and whether he considered it lucky or just whether it had become uh, a personal symbol, but it resonated and reverberated uh, with the things that were central to both his occupation and clearly uh, the life he was living at the time. Here's another great example of a symbol that could mean kind of anything but has deep roots in maritime culture and is in fact tied to sort of a sense of good luck uh, at the same time. Uh, this is the five-pointed nautical star. You'll see it uh, showing up in a wide variety of places in uh, nautical art uh, and, and objects. Uh, often inlaid in wood in things like chests and boxes, but also displayed as a three-dimensional object, uh, even in tampions, the sort of plugs that go at the end of the barrels on the guns of ships like USS Constitution. This is also a common symbol for uh, sailors' tattoos. The five-pointed nautical star has a rich kind of history that derives itself in part uh, from the compass rose, which itself serves as a sense of direction. All of that, of course, ties back to the idea that the nautical star we're talking about is Polaris, the North Star, which remains constant at its, at its location in the sky, and as a result can serve as a guide for, uh, for sailors who are lost at sea. Uh, and help guide them back to home. Um, the representation of it as a compass rose begins to develop very early on, and the compass rose then takes extends that out from just the representation of that one star uh, to the ability to find your direction in any kind of, of circumstances. Mixtures of this are then both uh, evocative of life at sea, where you're relying on the stars, and also a sense of belief in guidance and uh, the beneficence uh, that will carry you home uh, safely. Another reason that you tend to see it um, in a lot of tattoos and other personal imagery, and again, um, something that is not so much superstitious as it is just uh, a belief in that kind of guidance at sea. Reliance on that sense of guidance is one of the last major big sort of uh, inspirations for sailors' superstitions, traditions, and symbols, uh, and also uh, serves as the roots of a lot of those as well, too. Many of the common things that you think about are actually rooted in beliefs that are associated with deeper held uh, religious or spiritual beliefs. You'll hear things like sailors don't want to sail out a voyage on a Friday, tied back to uh, religious connotations of Good Friday, or the tradition of placing coins under the mast when it's stepped on board a ship, which ties back to the idea of coins both consecrating uh, ancient Greek temples all the way back then uh, a, as a gift to the god, and also a gift to the gods when uh, you were crossing the river Styx at the end of, of life. Uh, having those coins put in ahead of time uh, gave you a promise of good fortune in the future. But then there is also superstitions that are tied into just false causation and, uh, and beliefs that come and develop over time. 
I have a friend who's been sailing for many, many years and has a hat he made out of old sailcloth that saw him through a particularly bad storm. And ever since then, it is his favorite uh, lucky hat and he won't leave for a voyage without it. I'm pretty sure the hat's not actually staving off bad weather, but that association is something that gives him comfort and probably makes him more alert uh, and conscientious as a mariner underway. It may not be real or not, but all of these things I think are worth paying some attention to and thinking about because they tie us back to the rich history of culture connected to the sea and to sailors and give us some insight into why we believe the things that we do in the first place. From a museum and historian's perspective, understanding the meanings behind these kinds of symbols and superstitions help us understand why sailors in particular created a lot of the objects that they did and what meaning that they attached to them. It's worth asking what superstitions and symbols matter to you. What things do you believe in and where do you think they came from and why do they matter? Again, if you'd like to learn more about specific sailor superstitions and try and find out what things may or may not have been interpreted as good luck or bad luck, be sure to check out our Sailor's Life Live episode on that topic where our education director, Emily Bryant, will quiz you on exactly uh, whether or not things are good luck and bad luck. You can find the link to that video in the notes below on our YouTube channel or on any of our social media. Thanks for joining us. Again, if you have any questions regarding any of this, or if you have ideas or suggestions or questions regarding other episodes, don't hesitate to contact us at the USS Constitution Museum on any of our social media accounts. Thanks a lot.